Right, troops, this has got to be a... Uh, God, this is a, a big one today. We've done two in a row today. So this is some sort of record for me and Stephen. And we are yeah, now going to right. Jamie Roy. Hello, oh, welcome. Artist. Nice guy. What's happening? I'm all right, mate. How are you, boys? Good, good. mate. Good. We're good. We're We're cracking on. We're adapting and cracking well, on. It's all we can do, pal. It's all we can do. That's totally it. How's life treating you, mate? How's, how's the head? How's the music? <laughs> mate, I mean, it's weird. It takes something like this to actually... Yeah, I, I feel a bit more in control of what's going on. I mean, not partying as much and uh, not gigging, actually. Uh, focusing on music is, is a lot easier now. Whereas before, gigs, you, you're, you're relying on gigs coming in, you're relying on this, so you've got a lot more to worry about as well. Do you know what I mean? So, mm. I mean, I definitely feel like towards my music and towards just about just everything else. I feel cleaner, I feel healthier, I feel, yeah. I mean, it is, it's taken this, I mean, it's taken this to, to realise like a few things I could change or I should have changed. So, I mean, it's not all bad. You've got to take the positives out of it, haven't you? Yeah. And it's all about, that. again, it's how you look at things, isn't it? You know, it's, it's like, you could change you yourself. You see yourself up with the news and all that. So there's a wee bit of delay sometimes. We were talking about oh, right, that. It's all good. Uh, but I, it's just like if you bog yourself down with the news or let it get on top of you, it really could. It's, it's a no, mad one. Exactly. exactly. So no, definitely, there's definite positives I've drawn out of it. Um, I mean, even just going through my old vinyl and stuff like that, things that I just wouldn't normally have time to do. It's just that's that's it's, it's nice to do things like that, definitely. I definitely. think I think it's quite nice to see people as well living life at a bit of a slower pace. Oh mm. no, definitely. Especially like in Britain and all that, it's so hyped up and like even exactly. me being half Italian, the Italians are still a lot slower normally. <laughs> you know, and just in terms of living. So yeah, it's like yeah. Britain's like, you know, you're out of one meeting, you're in the car, you're eating your sandwich on it's the go. Like, it's like it's you know, I think hopefully this will make people kind of realise what's important and slow oh, no, definitely. Down. Definitely, and I think I think it's just in the dance music community as well. It's just everyone's got this uncertainty of what's going to happen, and like as as as, as I just said, I've just got to take the positives out of it, and just at the moment, um, it couldn't have came at a sort of better time for myself. I just I just signed this deal with Ultra Music and um, from America, and I mean that 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 there is an album deal that I've like I would never really have the time if I was proper gigging all the time to actually sit and even think about writing an album. And I was worried when, when, when the deal came through, something I couldn't turn down. I was like, I, I'm in. But I was worried. I was like, how long is this going to take me, blah, blah. And having this sort of nine weeks or whatever has just got me stuck into it. And now I feel a bit more, when I'm going back to Ultra, I'm like, I've, I've sort of had a long time to, mm -hmm. to sip my ideas. And I've, 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 I've sort of got four or five tracks of an album sort of nearly finished. So things like that, I mean, that's, that's great. I mean, yeah. things like that is, is what I sort of needed to do in this time. How would you say your routines changed since it happened? Like, has it or? Um, in day to day life, definitely. Like, I, I wasn't, I wasn't active or anything like that. And I mean, I've been, I've been running. I've been, I've been like using weights and that. And it's weird how that, how just being stuck in the house would make you want to be more productive. But it has. So routine in that sense has changed. Music wise, I mean, it's, I'm a bit more. Because you've got all day to do something. You, you can't say, I'll do it later or I'll do it tomorrow. You should just be getting on with it as much as possible. I mean, there's days when I'm not doing, when I'm not doing as I should be. I should be, I should be a bit more um, regimented, mm -hmm. routine. But mm -hmm. getting there, mate, of course, definitely. Yeah. Do you have your studio in the house then? So Studio's in the house. I mean, I, I did have a studio in central Manchester, but that's where I live now. Um, but it just wasn't working for me at the time. It was just, it was just, it's half an hour from my house. And I just wasn't getting enough out of it. So right. it's, in a, it's in a spare room at the moment. So, I mean, but no excuses now. Well, yeah. It's a perfect time now. You no, can't, you can't not travel now. Exactly. <laughs> pal, exactly. It's just, it's just, it's little things put me off and I'm like, if, I've, if the silliest thing is if, if I've got to drive in and I can't be bored, I'll, I'll, I'll literally will talk myself out of it. So I've learned to adapt to that, things like that. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, do you find though? Do you find it quite difficult? I was actually talking to uh, Davy Forbes the other day about this, and yeah, do you yeah, find yeah. It difficult in terms of like the headspace to create yeah. because obviously, when you're in a state of maybe stressing out or like, yeah. see, especially the first few weeks, I think most people were maybe in the same boat. We were yeah. all kind of freaking out about this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, like, it's quite hard to be creative in those moments. How do you yeah. find yourself taking yourself out of the worry? 
to then create. It sort of worked. It sort of worked in the opposite for me because I, when I used to make music when I was when I was gigging constantly, I used to sit and think, right, where am I gigging? I used to make music to what gigs I had. It was it was strange, right? So now I'm just making music to what I want, to, like what I feel in my, in my head really. Before I'd be like, right, where am I playing? I would sort of I would literally sort of make songs to like, right, I'm I'll make a bit more driving because I'm playing it Sankey's or I'm playing it um, I'm playing it uh, Ibiza Rocks, just different things would get into my head and I'd make sort of different kinds of music. So just now, because it's just, there's nothing happening, I'm sort of just free to float with my ideas, which, yes, yeah, that's a good place to be indefinitely. Uh, massively, and it's, it's going to be interesting just what it's going to do for music. Oh, you no, know what trends are going to come from this, what cycles, artists exactly. like yourself that are, you know, they're not anchored to, yeah, to yeah, make yeah. music for a gig, you know, it's, it's just like... Whew. I spoke to a few of my artist friends and they've, they're have they releasing music um, during this. And I think, like, two, there's two ways to look at it. There's like, of course, I think just get as much music out as possible. But then there, a few people are saying, well, there's no DJs playing it. You're not getting as much content and stuff. And I mean, I wouldn't worry too much about those sort of things. I mean, a beat port number one is a beat port number one during this or... Mm -hmm. Out of this, do you know what I mean? So little, little things like that. I mean, you will over... I, I sort of overthought it for a while. I'd be like, right, do I want to release music? during this is it good but you can't really think like that at all i mean yeah. it's still getting to people people are in the house listening to music do you know people what i mean streaming it i people are listening yeah. and live streams and stuff so it has yeah, been consumed you should you should you should always create but do you think then though the fact that you're now not making something that you are perceived as maybe tailored for a crowd are you feeling a wee bit better about just making i I, I definitely so it was like you, you sort of like like the more and more I went along in, my, in this in the career of mine, it's sort of you get sort of put into different brands and different situations, different club nights, and you sort of play music to fit mm -hmm. those sort of nights. And you don't really, it's not it's not a bad thing necessarily. But when when you're doing that constantly and you're thinking, right, I could I could make this, I could make that, you don't really get the, the freedom or the chances to do these things. So especially with doing with stuff with ultra music, it's a bit more out of my comfort zone. It's a bit more yeah, I mean, I've just, just it's just random music that I've wanted to make for a long time. So when that comes out, like you'll all hear it, of course. But it's just something that I've just I've sat for, with for a long time, and it's great to get the ideas out. Definitely. I mean, wow, well, ultra music that's massive, mate. So congrats yeah, on that. That's, that's yeah, top that's, class, that's, 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 that's sort of been in, sort of been in the works for over a year now, and I mean, it's just sort of it's, it's sort of something that's taken a long time to come into fruition. But no, I'm, I'm buzzing for that. Take us back to like the start then for, for when you had like a moment when you're younger, like this is what I want to do. So how did it all come around for you, like getting into this? hundred percent. It's just, I could only say Ibiza really. I mean, right. like I, I went there with loads of mates for since like 2006, 2007. And then about 2013, I thought, do you know what? I'm going to quit my job and just go and do a season. So I went out there 2013 with four or five lads and they bailed in the first two weeks and I was I was like I'm staying right, so right. I, I got a job with uh, with We Love at Space on Sundays um, just selling tickets and I met everyone through that I met like I met Jack I met Scream I met all the all the sort of people of class as friends now in the music industry and like that was a big turning point for me where I was, I was like this is what I want to do so I went next year um Work for We Love Again, and then 2015, no, 2016, I got off. For, I was sort of DJing regular, like sort of in, in the clubs in the West End and stuff, and I got a couple of gigs at, at Sankey's in Ibiza, and then I did a tour with Hot Sense 82, who, who had met the previous years in Australia, and I got an email from Steve Lawler that while I was abroad, and um, he's asking me if I wanted to be a resident for Warriors. Now that was like the big turning point for me. That was like a weekly residency um, at Sankey's Ibiza, and that, that sort of changed everything for me. That sort of manager sort of came into, into, into play, sort of booking agents came into play because of that, and it sort of it sort of spiraled from there. And then, um, like fast forward to last year, Nick Van Truly doing a Shwaya for him at Dance or Die. That was another massive resident. Like, mm. I, I, Ibiza's just been like out of this world for me. Like it's a massive, a massive part of my my journey and my and my career. That's awesome. 
That's awesome. Because the thing is, you hear so many people saying, yeah, I'm going to go and do the season and I... Of course, mate. I mean, it was hard graft. Don't get me wrong. I've lost a few games. The majority of the guys all bailed out. And it's like, actually, you've seen the long-haul picture here and going, yeah. do you know what? Yeah. This is going to take longer than two or three weeks, man. Oh, this, this, is this is going to be years of report building. Right. Yeah. And people really don't realise the value and the connection and just being oh, with someone else. Yeah. Like, the time. See, when you go in that and go, right, I'm going to give them my tune and I want a gig or I want this, they're going to find you out. You know yeah. what I mean? It's yeah. like it's nice to just have those connections, have those parties and those yeah, moments. Yeah, yeah. Forget, I mean, sometimes forgettable. And, uh, and, <laughs> you know, and it's like you'll always remember that and go, God, see, when we were in that party, he put on loads of good tunes. What's he like? What's he like yeah. DJing? And yeah. you never know how it was. That's amazing. No, I mean, I mean, I mean, definitely the, the 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 connections thing and contacts over there. Like all I did was in my first few years, I just I just went out as much as possible. Like like I can't I could not stress that enough to younger DJs was like just get out there. I mean, obviously, not everybody can do a beta seasons. Everybody everybody's got their own sort of their own sort of like a market of where they can go and party and things like that. And I mean, I suppose it is different in all in all cases, but. I was lucky enough to, to, to meet a lot of people and just hang out and party with as many people. It was just natural, do you know what I mean? It wasn't forced or anything like that. Yeah. And that, that, was, that was something that I was, I was really lucky to do and um, just made some good, good friends out of it and good contacts. And it's just been, it's been, um, it's been a, good, a good five, six years and I've been touring regularly and then something like this happens and just bring stuff into perspective, man. Like you just, you never know what's going on in the world and you just, I miss it. Do you know what I mean? I miss the rave scene big time. I miss, I miss everything about it, but we'll get it back. Do you know what I mean? That's the main yeah, thing. Yeah. Get it back. And, and Harvey and Mackay was saying something very interesting there. He was, he was talking to Gary Beck and it's like, this might reset a lot of things, you know, and big take time. back to the underground and, and, and yeah, parts yeah. that maybe aren't as huge exactly. and, and like the production was, because it was going like that way. Production the stages, it was getting very commercialised and stuff. So it might reset things and, and go back to our raw scene, you know. Local, local talent and stuff like that just might get a shout up. And I, yeah. I, I get a lot of messages from a lot of young lads and they send me a lot of music and stuff. And I'm like, it's 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 hard for them, do you know what I mean? Like there's so much competition and so much, um, so many lads doing it and so many girls and boys, do you know what I mean? So it's just hard to sort of make a break for it and you just got to stick in it like I just I just stuck in it as like a bad smell mate you know what I mean I was I was I was there as much as possible I think um, one of the key key things is just persistence like <clears throat> give up on it then you've get, you've given up on it that won't happen but if you're just knocking away at it constantly and loving it yeah. you know something will start to shift probably attitude, right? attitude yeah. everything in it though it's Definitely. Like, yeah, it really is because the I mean Stephen the amount of times I've even been with you I've seen Stephen's career grow from yeah. you know from no, playing no. nobody to, to being in arenas with him and stuff and it's like the amount it's so many times close to giving up yeah and then been like nah fuck it let's just keep going mm -hmm. and that's it's like that's always been the case because at the end of the day, something like this, as you say, puts life into perspective. So all of that other stuff, that was all fun. As exactly. much as it was hard, it was yeah. fun man, because look at what we're doing now, man. I'd much rather be through those stressful times right. getting all yeah. the knockbacks and exactly. exactly. You're totally defined by your knockbacks, I think. I definitely. But each knockback actually gets you to work harder or totally. You know, totally. totally. See uh, Jamie, one of the first tracks I actually heard it yourself that I remember playing on one of the live streams and it was actually a remix and it yeah. was the see the flamed feeling dually oh, remix that's right, that's right aye I, I still love that I mean don't get me wrong I love the original what you've done with Kai as well, I think, as well. what a remix but it's like how do you find then collaborating with somebody and working on your own what are the benefits what well, do you know what like? I've, I've, I've been a big collaborator I've, I, I find myself working with people um, it's my favourite thing but Obviously, I sort of let that for a couple of years just be my main, my, my main thing was just I just collaborated as much as possible and, I, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. And then I was like, I've got to make my sort of my own identity sometimes. You, you sort of don't realise how you're perceived um, by, by, by your fans because you're doing a lot of work. Not, you're doing a lot of work that wasn't solo, so it was a lot of, um, a lot of collabs. And I'm like, I want to bring my own identity. And this thing with Ultra was just something that I was like, right, this is just me. Do you know what I mean? So it's, it's something that, 
I can just showcase what my sound is. I mean, it's very like, uh, sort of, it's sort of a lot different from what I've done before. I mean, it's like a lot more, I, I want to say Sasha-esque, Balearic sort of Ibiza um, sort of house. And it's, it's just something that um, I've, I, for a while, I sort of struggled working myself. I don't know why that was. I think just I just got into a routine. I just working with people and sort of sending ideas back and forth. And now the last sort of three months, well, the last sort of year, but the last three months being in sort of lockdown. Um, is it even that long? No, it's only two months, isn't it? But it feels, it feels like six months. But it's just sort of made me come back to getting my ideas out there. And it's just, it's, I'm, I can't wait to get it out, to be honest. Brilliant, I can't wait to hear it. The minute you mentioned know. Balearic, Ibiza vibes, you know, that kind of sound. Yeah. That's, I've always been a humongous fan of that sound. I mean, it's just sort of the, the, the classic house style that I've, I've wanted to do and wanted to showcase. So, yeah, just looking forward to that, man. Must what be about, like, oh, sorry, uh, sorry, Gal. Um, what about, like, you know, your, your influences, you know, like, when you're yeah. growing up, going to the Archies and stuff you're talking about, right? So what, yeah. what kind of makes me go to then and, and what was inspiring you back then? Back then, I was I was sort of it was like I was into like the disco and stuff like that, Green Velvet and uh, you know Alka and all that. that was sort of cool. I sort of grew up in all that sort of stuff, sort of fake blood and the sort of fidget house style. But obviously, the Ibiza stuff sort of came it was it was it was there during it, but not really what I party to. Um, and then it's just when you're thinking about what you want to make and what what sort of sound that I'm liking that 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 there is just. I'd seen Sasha Digweed at the Archies. I'd seen even just like when I see Carl Cox and stuff, and even Fanchuli and stuff. Just that sort of classic sound. I've just mm. I've grown to just love again, really. Yeah, cool, amazing. And then, like, what about your process in the studio? Will you get a wee melody idea, or will you find a sample perhaps that you go right? I'm going to start with this. Yeah. How do you well, go about that? So about a year ago, I was teaching music production in Manchester, and that sort of it made me sort of refine how I, how I produced again. So I, I used to start with drums and stuff like that, and that sort of just bored the life out of me, do you know what I mean? So now I'll sort of work on a melody, and I was always quite good at, like, chords and melodies and um, getting the keys correct and stuff like that. So, that, yeah, I'll start with a melody, then sort of branch off, get some get some pads, get some get the bass down, and then I'll sort of work with... I'll, I'll have some basic drums, but then I'll sort of put more layers in and... I just like sort of working with guitars as, as, as the Sasha S stuff and like sort of mm. some dreamy guitars, big apps and stuff like that. So just a bit more musical, whereas before it was a lot of the tech house and the house, sort of the techie stuff I was doing was a lot of drums, yeah. a lot of drums variations of drums, a um, lot of bass lines, a lot of, yeah, so now it's a bit more melodic, a bit more, um, bit more what I've been sort of catering for. Yeah. You know? Yeah, very cool. If you had to pick like a VST or a favourite tool that you're using at the moment, is there anything jumping out at you? I mean, I use a lot. I use a lot of contact stuff. Um, lot, but that complete control, um, which allow this is really great for people that um, aren't maybe as musically uh, like musically knowledge as they should be. Um, so you can set a chord, set it to a minor key, and basically it'll light up the the keyboard mm -hmm. if you've got if you've got the keyboard and i mean it's just that in sense of anybody that wants to make anything musical can just jump straight into it so you don't have any musical knowledge any 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 background in music you just jump straight in so yeah the, the native instrument stuff's brilliant absolutely right. brilliant top notch top notch Did you the whole the ultra thing then was that yeah. Is that was that is that a bit bittersweet just because obviously it's an album deal, so obviously that's cracking and that's something you can do in the house. It doesn't yeah. matter if there's a pandemic or not. But yeah. actually when it comes to right, the album's done, Jamie, we want to get you over for a tour, but we can yeah. at the moment. Of course. Of course. I mean I think, Yeah, I think the album will probably still take me another six months if I'm honest. So I'm I'm hoping that God will be out of it by then. But a nice way to launch. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. And I like with with um, something like 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 sign like I've never signed a deal um, with such a big big label, so it was quite nerve wracking for me to be honest. And um, so there's a single coming out, um, hoping August time, um, if all goes well. Um, it's just so much, so much, so many things that happen in, in something like this, publishing wise and like just stuff that I never knew about. So 
even get my head around that now is I'm starting to get my head around it. Just just having like having lawyers to deal with and things like that. It's quite nerve wracking. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'm yeah. going to say because there's a lot of guys out there that maybe get put in a position where they sign the dotted line because they're yeah. seeing. But actually, did so? Did you have a wee bit of help to look over stuff like that? Before did, you yeah. So 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 um, my management um, they've got. Uh, lawyers that look after their interests, which look after my interests. So it's sort of they they would they would put everything to me in sort of layman's terms because you look through it and you're just bewildered by it. Do you know what I mean? Is um, me? Is like I, I, I was so excited by it. I was like I could have signed it straight away. Do you know what I mean? And you just you just you've got to be wary of these sort of things. So they're not trying to to fuck you over or anything like that. They're just trying to. Um, Look at it. Exactly, you just got to get it right. Do you know what I mean? Because these things could be a, quite a big part of your life. So yeah. you've just got to, ah, you just got to be, just got to be careful with everything you do, I suppose. Um, but so that's 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 been a. If, if I didn't have um, that to do, I'd sort of I, you sort of get lost. You you sort of worry about things. You're like right, I've got no gigs. I've got no music coming out. You know what I mean? You get you get. Yeah. It's quite a. You're self-employed basically as a DJ, so yeah. something like this, you, you want to be ahead or you want to have a lot of music in the pipeline and all this, so aye, it's been it's been a, something I've been happy to have, definitely. And it's, it's making probably a lot of artists across the board, from the top guys right through, like just having to think about different ways of staying afloat. No, oh, definitely. Making like, money from music. Live, live streaming exactly. and everything, well, that's great. Aye. I mean, uh, there's definitely a lot of ways, or, or there's going to have to be some different ways for artists to stay afloat, you know. And there's, yeah, band, there's I, I, band camp and all that, though, which seem to be doing some good work when it comes to this. Yeah. That's a great company. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, so like you waving their fees market. to get artists paid and all that, you know. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But moments me, like that work for this, though, for things like this, you know, like companies like that, they move at the times to go, right, how are we going to switch this up? And that yeah. is the perfect way it's like your own ownership isn't it from the ground up as jamie said there's not many people doing it now then sometimes it might actually work in your favor to do your own thing and grow your own sort of hype or whatever i completely mate completely now i've got a bit of a silly one here yeah. right? a little birdie tells me right that uh, <laughs> i really hope this is true <laughs> that you can walk with your feet pointing backwards <laughs> i can mate I've, I've got I've got stupidly large feet for some reason, right? And uh, I can I, fig, I figured out I could I can turn my feet backwards basically, like I could face you and turn both my feet backwards, right? And That's yeah, something, right? something that, That's in the middle in the middle of a party back in like middle of DC ten, <laughs> just pull it out. It's a bit daft, like. But I mean, I don't know if I could even get it on screen, could I? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't want any injuries. <laughs> I'll show you, boys. Wait there, wait there. Do you think it would be warm up to something like that? <laughs> wait there, wait there. The last thing you Right. Perfect, right? Oh, my God! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, so I think, I think I can do that, though. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> that is this is the clip we're going to use. This is the clip we're going to use. I don't know how I could do that, man. That, uh, oh, wow. I mean, that, there, there you go. So even another <laughs> way, potentially, if you want to get the eye of a DJ or something, then you're... <laughs> exactly, <laughs> mate. If they'll, they'll remember that. Do you know what I mean? If I want, if I want, if I want to make them remember me, I'll do that. <laughs> um, that well, actually, uh, I, I ascertained that through a mutual friend, Nico Balladucci. That's, right. That's right. I, I, I was like, who would have told you that, Nico? Right. And, uh, you know, because he, he, he told me he told me a couple of things and I was like, you know, give me something that he's going to be like, ah, how's That's, a good, do that? That's a good one. I like it. <laughs> so what's, so other than this, you are just hoping to get the tunes rattled together. Yes, I mean, album. I'm I just... A deadline, pardon? Have you got a deadline for the album? Or? Um, no, I mean, I'd like to get it done in the next six months. Um, I, I don't want to, I, I sort of don't want to rush it. Do you know what I mean? I don't, it's quite hard to, you're dealing with an A&R that um, you've got to send your music to, so I want it to be right. And I was quite, for a while I was like, I don't know if I'm even making the right stuff. I get, I get quite nervous at these things. A lot of people, a lot, a lot, of, a lot of producers and a lot of DJs, a lot more, um, 
like headstrong, whereas I, I, I second guess everything I'm doing. But I mean, I, I suppose that's natural. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, being, being that in that sort of situation, and I think that's what probably I'll make. I'm, I'll make it a really good album. Do you know what I mean? I think if I was just to rush it and go with my first instinct and not try this and not try that, I think. I think. I. I mean, I'm. I'm, I'm really happy with what's with what, what I've made so far. Um, and. I'll just be do- it'll be something different for me as well, which I'm quite quite looking forward to. Whereas I was sort of getting a bit um, my, my my music that I was making, I wasn't I wasn't enjoying it as much as I used to, which is um, I'll just be honest, I wasn't really enjoying what I was making as much. Um, the gigs I was the gigs I was playing, I wouldn't even play my own stuff. Do you know what I mean? So um, not that I hated it or anything like that. I just was sort of getting I just sort of got in a bad a bad way of working. I think it was. So this as a, this has just been a great thing to. To go back to my life, aye, definitely, mate, definitely, definitely. And I mean, I, I'm just at the moment. I'm missing partying and I'm missing raving, and I'm, uh, that's what I'm. That's sort of where you get your ideas from, and that'll come back eventually, and then we can get back to work. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. It is a strange time. Like, no, no I mean, we're all we are all in that. Same we're all in the same boat, mate. That's it. No, nobody's nobody's different from anyone else, and that's it. It's good that we can continue to do stuff, though. You know, and like. Yeah. I, even said, like, you know, once this gets uh, done, man, you know, it would be great to definitely get you up into the studio. Oh, I love to, absolutely love to, boys. No, I would love to. Glasgow, you know. Just, oh, definitely. Definitely. Yeah, welcome, man, for sure, you know, and uh, yeah. doing another podcast and even making music, having fun, you know what I mean? It is. It's, exactly. uh, it's just about That's creating, isn't it? Well, let's do it. Let's do it. The more the, more the merrier, I feel. I mean, um, I'd, I'd be right up for that. I mean, do, do a wee night out after it as well or something. Aye, could do that. You should yeah. do a party, potentially. Exactly. You know I mean? They're the best. <laughs> Big gal has been asking everybody we've been interviewing. Um, basically, a, a set for all the viewers or people that are listening that they might not have heard before, but like a favourite set of yours or live stream. Or even an artist, yeah. Or, or a favourite so. artist that maybe people, a wee bit out there or whatever, but whatever you think. So my favourite set on live stream, there's a set by, it's Richie Houghton, Back to Back, Marco Crow, 2009, Amnesia, right? Whoa. The best, it's on, it's on Dance Tripping TV, right? Set, set start on YouTube. It is the best set you'll ever watch, I'm telling you. So I, I watched it, I had it on, 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 uh, on Friday, me and the missus. Uh, I watched that, I was watching that, um, the Sunways live stream as well, because I'm very, very into my minimal um, at the moment, and... And that sort of shines in, in my in my in my productions coming up as well, which is something that um I've been great has been great to showcase as well. So animal stuff, looking forward to hearing that, mate. I'm loving aye, all aye, mate. Aye, it's brilliant. So I think it's such a great question that though, Gal, when you started asking, because like it's all these sets that yeah, like, artists have got their favourites that you yeah. know, some, some of the time, you know, not a lot of people have heard of them. What well, that particular set? That, that exact set, I exactly. Yeah, so, is they all say it's the best set ever, so I don't know who to believe. It's live, it's live from Amnesia, so you just every, you see the crowd, you see them playing, it's just it's absolutely mint. Amnesia it's is uh, it's my favorite club, Amnesia. Yeah, yeah. It's, no, just, it's, it's wild. Well, I mean, thanks so much, Jamie, for well, coming. Thank you, boys. Pleasure for us to meet you for the yep. first time here online, strangely. <laughs> um, but you know, you know, good vibes all around. The music's great, and you know, we're we're going to continue following. And again, we've got mutual yep. friends in the studio, so really looking forward no, to getting I, together. I, at some thank point. you very much for having me. And um, as first chance we get, boys, I'll come up and see you, and we'll we'll get something else done. Definitely sounds good to me, mate. Pleasure, Jamie. Thank you very much, boys. Take care. Yeah. Cheers, Cheers, boys.